right, everybody. Welcome to the BOF wrap-up session for Academy on Monday, August 13th, 2018. We've got about 100 people here. We had 12 BOF sessions today, and so I'm going to ask a representative from every BOF to come up and, and give a little one-minute, two-minute summary of what you did today in your BOF. And we're going to start with the Conan BOF, which has Ovidiu's name on it. Have we, have we got any Conan people? All right, no Conan today. I can uh, briefly say that we found out lots of things are uh, awesomely prepared and then complexity hits. So we figured out, yes, uh, one Git repository provides several libraries sometimes, so we should split it into several Conan uh, packages, so that makes things a bit more complicated but we might actually end up with something pretty nice and hopefully make building stuff when you're a new contributor much easier and also even uh, the f actually creating applications and deploying them easier potentially. So, yeah, it sounds hopeful, but a lot of work is needed. If you have a bit of Python time on your hands, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, thank you, Frederick. Next up is the automotive session. Who did automotive? Okay, that is a camera. Last year, we worked on identifying the gap between where Katie was back then and what we need to showcase our software in uh, R&D automotive environments. Now, this year, that gap is way shorter and we are ready to start working in showcasing KD software on uh, small devices uh, on Yocto. So we have been discussing which applications uh, would be interested to showcase. We need something that works on Plasma Mobile that is uh, interesting. And also we have been discussing where we can showcase it uh, during uh, uh, the rest of a year up to FOSTEM next year. So hopefully we will start showcasing KD software in embedded and automotive environments this year. Thanks, Augustine. Now we're going to move on to the whole day worth of boffs for uh, KDE's premier product, pl the Plasma stuff. Um, <laughs> Dave, please talk about Plasma. Okay, so, so we had a bunch of different topics. Uh, we started with Plasma Mobile. We started with the Plasma. Mobile. <laughs> mobile. No, literally said <laughs> So, this is fun. Okay, so the, for the Plasma Mobile Wolf, we discussed uh, what is current state and one of the important points we discuss is how to recruit new m members for the Plasma Mobile because currently it's uh, very low on the contributor's side. And we basically discussed some more bits about on the technical side, like uh, how using bundles on the mobile. And I think the discussions were m very useful. So, yeah. Then we moved on to some of our Wayland topics. There was discussion about screen sharing from Jan. Wave. That really worked for the camera. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> Wayland topics, several different protocols for input and screens and scaling. People talk about some of their issues that we need to address. So that came in to, to giving us a lot of to-dos and not a lot done. After lunch, we came back to discuss some more of the long-term bigger picture topics. We discussed the talk that I gave yesterday about moving some parts out of process and where we go. That came on to a lot of good ideas of things to explore and some new discussion points. Afterwards, Afterwards, uh, like uh, every, uh, like uh, above of every single academy since uh, a decade or so, we talked about uh, uh, activities and virtual desktops. <laughs> Um, so uh, since now we pretty much have to have to uh, redo the work for the supporting Wayland, both for Visual Desktop and activities, 
uh, we are looking uh, about ways to either merge them or make them work better together. Um, good news is that we will have uh, uh, virtual desktops back in Wayland for uh, 5.14. Then uh, um, after that uh, we'll start to look into activities. Uh, uh, an interesting thing, uh, uh, as every time we did um, uh, we did a little polling of the of the people present uh, that were uh, um, that were attending there, and uh, uh, quite some people were uh, using uh, both uh, virtual desktops and activities at the same time for pretty much the same uh, uh, the same use case. One was using only activities and not virtual desktops. Some other were using only virtual desktops and not activities, but this uh, gave us a bit of a better idea uh, where to go, um, where to go with the architecture, and hopefully, hopefully, in Wayland will be way more smooth and integrated and beautiful for everybody. <laughs> Next, note will be on the mailing list. All right, thank. <coughs> Thanks, Dave, Bouchan, and Marco. Um, next up in that room, there was the HIG, our Human Interface Guidelines. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the Human Interface Guidelines both uh, it was organized by Fabian Riedmeier, who already had to leave, so I will just wrap it up quickly. So we talked about this uh, project that she uh, initiated. We have uh, we had the HIG in the Vicky, but now we uh, have it on a new address at hig.kd.org, and you are uh, welcome to visit it. And we talked about like how we could improve it in detail, so it's in a new format, and it's Sphinx written now, which uh, improves in many aspects above how it was before, and so we want to improve it in details more, and yeah, we got some feedback, but we also want to look at the bigger picture of it, like how can we uh, see the human interface guidelines maybe now for the next few years in terms of plasma and breeze and all the applications and yeah we will discuss this uh, or the designers will discuss this in the VDG meetings tomorrow and you are welcome to join there. Thanks Roman. Uh, moving on we got a promo boff. But I guess promo. <laughs> promo is probably promoing. Thank you. Hey, so um, in the promo buff today, uh, Paul and Ivana talked about everything they did in the year. He showed us a lot of statistics that they pulled from um, the Twitter, the page views. We talked about um, how to maintain user engagement, what were the drops, what, the, what were the spikes. Um, we also talked about um, you know, how can we engage, um, and that was one of the action items, um, uh, reach out to more um, T-Shows and see how um, you, we can get more um, kitty users there. What else do we discuss? We talked about um, mentoring programs and um, you know how can we do more outreach to the students. We talked about the plans of revamping the website and um, yeah, I think uh, that was about it. Thank you, Devaya. You're half a minute too late, Paul, to give a summary of your own work, but Devaya has covered for you. Uh, is Camilo around for the Vave? Vave, Vave. All right, Michael, please tell us about Vave. Uh, all right, so uh, Camilo held his uh, uh, bar for his uh, Wave uh, multimedia app, uh, music player, basically. And so in that BOF, uh, we, we talked a lot about uh, kind of like the, the focus, because he's, he's got very uh, impressive vision, very long-reaching scope. Uh, he's, he's already got his app working on Kirigami, so you can run it on Android today, and he's able to show it and demonstrate it. And you can run it on Plasma Mobile today. So it's an interesting use case for that platform. And again, he showed it on, his, on a Nexus 5 running Plasma Mobile. 
Uh, but he's also talking about back-end stuff, like uh, SoundCloud, you know, and how people can, uh, you know, make music together and use free software apps like Wave in order to share that together. Uh, so some of the other stuff that we talked about is, uh, you know, like kind of approach the uh, the intellectual property and copyright issues that are inevitably associated with anything with music nowadays, uh, and kind of, you know, where the uh, the current commercial market has kind of left opportunities for free software to develop, like trying to play music on your phone without having to use streaming or without an internet connection. Uh, so that, that's kind of the high point. Uh, a lot to do and, and very impressive progress so far. Thanks, Michael. Um, next up is a category you wouldn't, uh, it's hard to believe he's really here and that he's really real. There's the sysadmin boff. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. So in the sysadmin boff, we had a very productive, if somewhat, if somewhat lengthy discussion about how to handle sysadmin onboarding as well as going over everything that we currently have in terms of infrastructure, what is easiest to delegate out to members of the community without affecting principles around trust and security of our infrastructure because our data is important and very sacred to us. And we came up with a list of systems and items that could very quickly be broken out and which could reduce the load on the sysadmin team so that we can focus on doing other items and we also came up with a list of other things that could potentially be broken out to in the long run reduce the issues with capacity we have and we also talked to a much lesser extent about the identity revamp and what's necessary to bring that forward and replace the current platform which now is quite dated and has reached the end of its lifetime. Thank you, Ben. Um, next up is the Fabricator boff. Uh, so after migrating to Fabricator, like two years of like that has been two years, and there were like lots of complaints about Fabricator, and lots of people hated the Fabricator at completely. Uh, so that's why I registered essentially this boff to gather around some actual constructive feedback about what's wrong with uh, what's wrong with the fabricator and how we see admins can solve it or possibly forward that discussions to upstream i actually didn't expect that much audience in my buff and it turned out that the whole room was completely full uh, <laughs> so, uh, but in, in the essence we gathered a lot of nice feedback about how So essentially, we gathered a lot of nice feedback of how, what the community's problems are with the fabricator, and like, we also got solutions for many of the community members' problems right on the off. So that's a good, yeah. Thanks, Bhushan. Um, also, we have the community data and community metrics boff. Is Kevin around? Otherwise, I will give a summary. Um, in the KDE community, we've been using the blue blobs for years. The blue blobs have turned green, and after that, kind of pastel colors. It's about measuring the health or the state of our community. Um, we've used these blo blue blobs, green blobs, to take a look at who's contributing and how often and who's, who's busy. Um, it's also a means of detecting when people go away because then you can be concerned. You can say, hey, where you been? Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome to your first academy. Um, but there's more to measure in our community than just that. And there's more to our lives than just commit messages. So we've been considering what other data sources we can add to the analysis tools and how we can extend the analysis tools to produce more information about how our community works so that when people ask us, hey, how are you doing? We can give a really lengthy factual answer. <laughs> All right, that was the community se data session.
Ben Lydia led the community goals retrospective. She's away. Anyone else want to give a summary of the goals session? Is Neophytos here? Then Neophytos, I'm going to stick you with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the discussion involved around the main, the three goals that was voted. There was a discussion about the privacy goal a bit and uh, how that we can evolve that through the years and to integrate it better into our uh, into what what we are doing, because there was some. Um, suggestions that uh, were not communicating enough on that goal. Um, we were discussing a bit about how to think of the goals, w how do we plan to end them, or maybe how other goals might succeed them in the future, and how do we decide that one goal is complete and one is not. And we talk a bit more on each goal and what we can do going forward uh, in regards to the onboarding goal and in regards to the um, uh, usability goal. And we, we shared also some uh, problems we found so far in, in terms of trying to achieve these goals, what we see, well, what are the areas we can improve and what are the areas that we did well and we need to continue doing. Um, that's what comes to mind now, actually. Yeah. And of course, it's good to have goals, but in the end, we need to get our software out there and that's why we had the distro boff, which got all the distros together to talk about our common goals and common issues. Yeah. So, uh, is this fine? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, in, in the distro boff, uh, first, uh, well, we had uh, lightning talks introducing uh, nine good fee distros featuring KDE, some small ones and some large ones. And then we had an hour of discussion uh, where we discussed some of the issues that uh, we are facing uh, uh, all together. And one big topic was how to deal with bug reports, uh, uh, how to get users to file uh, good bug reports, and how to get them upstream when needed, uh, because most of because very often they end up uh, sticking in the, around in the downstream bug distribution bug trackers. And uh, and uh, and another uh, issue was also how to get uh, distribution developers more involved in, in upstream uh, in upstream development. What can we do for that? Yeah, you want to add anything more? I would just say that a lot of people thought that we were going to fight, and instead we're all collaborating, so. Thanks, Kevin. That wraps up the BOF wrap-up for today. I'll see you all again tomorrow morning at 9.30 for another session of BOFs. Have a good evening.